Okay, yeah, so uh, my name's Matthew Iveson, and I'm a researcher at uh, the Edinburgh Pathfinder Project. I'm going to be talking very briefly about some of the work we've been doing to create a new, uh, very unique research resource um, by combining historical data with routinely collected data from the modern age. So I'm sure I don't have to tell you all that families play a very important role in um, an individual's mental health risk. Um, most of the time, previous work has thought of this in terms of transmission, um, either directly uh, transmission of risk through things like genetics, um, or indirectly through things like parental behaviours. And very few um, studies have looked at the impact of shared family circumstances, so things like poverty that affect everybody in the household. And this is partly because it's hard to distinguish from transmission in most cases. What we really want to be able to do is to partition out the different sources of an individual's risk in order to better understand what causes their mental ill health. So partitioning them into, for example, factors that can be attributed to themselves, factors that can be attributed to their parents or spouses um, or other members in the family. Um, and also factors that can be attributed to the, the whole family, so that are shared amongst the, the whole family. But the problem is that doing this kind of partitioning needs a lot of data, um, both in terms of uh, the variety of measures required. We need uh, something about the family, but we also need something about the socioeconomics of the family and the health of each family member. Um, and we also need a, a large volume and complexity in order to properly recreate the family units that we're trying to look at. And so the, the modern solution is really to use, um, to link together routinely collected data from various sources. So this includes health data from NHS, uh, NHS Scotland, administrative data from the National Records of Scotland and uh, Scottish Government data sources. And we want to link together data for individuals <coughs> not only to reconstruct uh, their life course, uh, both socioeconomically and in terms of me their mental health trajectories, um, but also by combining the trajectories of individuals, we can um, get, uh, we can recreate families by um, getting all members of the family together at the same, in the same analysis. And one of the, the real benefits of this sort of linkage is that we get very big samples for one thing, we can essentially use the whole population, um, we can make a re very representative sample uh, because we, we can pick up the kind of groups that uh, traditional surveys tend to miss out. We can get that variety of measures by building in um, lots of different data sources and we can do it for a relatively low cost as well. I think that's one of the, the real benefits. So for this particular project, we try to reconstruct families um, in a, for, a, for a kind of e-cohort way. Um, so we started with an easily traceable single year birth cohort um, as a base. Now there's a few special things about this, this cohort, it's called the Scottish Mental Survey 1947 cohort. Um, most notably though is its representativeness. Um, it included almost all 11 year old uh, children living in Scotland in 1947. Um, and it, uh, by tracing them these individuals, both in their historic uh, birth records, but also in historic marriage records uh, from 1947 onwards, we can identify uh, their children and their spouses just administratively, so without ever having to contact the participant. Um, and we can use this to reconstruct family units at scale. So we can then combine um, the uh, base cohort with their identified children and spouses to create a, a very large um, single family cohort. Um, and then when we go forwards to do the linkage um, into their modern day health records and um, socioeconomic uh, records, we can build in things like the uh, really rich health data, like the prescriptions that um, Heather was talking about, as well as uh, hospital records and census returns death records and birth records, amongst other things. So this, I don't expect you to read this slide, it's just to show you how complicated the mechanics are in terms of um, being able to pass data between different organisations whilst um, maintaining that degree of data protection 
that is required for these sorts of studies and to be able to make sure that nobody is identified at any stage. And again, this is just to show you how much uh, administrative work is involved in these sorts of projects. Um, and it's a very substantial amount of time, um, in fact, the, the whole two years. Um, so we're at the stage now where we have um, some of the linked data for the base cohort um, already that we're already analysing. And National Records of Scotland are uh, busy indexing the, the children and spouses as we speak. So I think we, we've come quite a long way from the, the start. And the result of this hard work is a large complex e-cohort that uh, incorporates multiple domains of measures. Um, as I said, both health measures, mental health measures, physical health measures, um, and uh, those socioeconomic measures, which are under uh, important for understanding the kind of family context. Um, all of this whilst retaining a family structure, which is very difficult to achieve otherwise. One of the real crowning jewels of this is it's longitudinal. Um, it captures risk factors from uh, the childhood, as childhood phase uh, for each individual up until their adulthood, if they are adults. And it can essentially track their mental health across their whole life course. And it's also worth pointing out that this sort of um, cohort has a lot of potential to add new generations administratively again as we, as we go forwards but also to build in new data sources as they become available. So you may have heard of, for example, the Guthrie spots, which is a potential national genetic resource. It's also uh, one of our main aims has been to make this very accessible for other researchers. And as I, as I said, it involves quite a lot of um, administrative headache. And so what we want to do is create a lasting footprint on the data landscape to make sure that other researchers don't have to do this amount of work to use this uh, cohort going forwards and um, to make sure that the data is readily linkable. And just uh, finally, to bring it back to the research questions that we were interested in in the first place, um, there are a number of different questions which this um, kind of data resource can address. Um, and hopefully in the future, other researchers will be able to bring their own questions to this data set. But we, we started with three real uh, questions that we are still hoping to, to address. Um, one is really understanding the different um, sources of, of risk, uh, particularly for depression. Um, one is uh, looking more closely at the timing at which uh, depression can be transmitted between individuals within a family. And the other is trying to really pin down what drives resilience within a family, where one family member might be um, affected by a particular event, whereas the other family members may not be. And so th these are all questions that we're, we're hoping to um, address over the, the coming months um, as we go forward. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions?